Since there's no point in trying to make this video advertiser friendly, I might as well f***ing swear like it's going out of f***ing style. F too late. Jesus, Blake. Are you really sleeping? Begin with main character waking up cliche as well as nightmare opening cliche. That's two cents for the price of one. You're calling out some other woman's name. What? In your sleep. Jessica, I think. Yeah, and you should recognize that name since you were friends with Jessica in Catholic school. And would know that she was friends with Blake and that she hung herself. Cross it into reservation land now. You said I'm looking for some sort of factory? Yeah. We can look, but there's nothing out here. It does look pretty empty. Maybe you should have checked Google Maps before charting the chopper ride out to look for it. Or check the local history. Or a road atlas, since a factory would make use of roads. My point is, modern horror stories are so done in by current technology that characters have to be completely stupid about using it, or put into some situation where it can be used for the scenario to even work. Also, why would you look for an old town from the air at night with heavy cloud cover? I see that Blake went to the same film school as Elena from Uncharted, since he too uses a home video recorder for filming a TV show. I'm Lynn Langerman, here for Newstomorrow.net. Well, that explains it. With an organization named like that, we are obviously dealing with a Facebook or oriented news group. In search of the origins of murder victims. Hey, Lynn, Do. um, I don't think you should say murdered. We don't know that. Oh, I'll say she strangled herself to death. That's what the police report says. We may play this before the doctor interviews. Well, considering you told Blake to shoot this for the intro, I get the feeling it will be coming well before any doctor interviews about the murder victim. Two weeks ago, a young woman was found wandering barefoot pregnant and alone. But you just said Jane Doe was found strangled to death. If she was found wandering alone on the highway, I would assume she was brought to a hospital or the police, which would mean she was murdered sometime after that. Considering what this cult is like, I doubt they have the ability to pull something like that off. Oh. We lost the engine. Conception bonds are a more powerful force than we originally believed. Let's just go ahead and bring back the jump scare counter for this game. I get the feeling we're going to need it. I see you reference The Shining. I also like good horror stories. Let's do lunch. Blake survived a helicopter crash that tossed him from the chopper onto the rocks. The crash also conveniently tossed him his camera, which also came out unscathed. Blake is the kind of guy that has to record everything he sees no matter the situation or danger he's in, and then likes to offer commentary on it. In other words, the guy has a promising YouTube career ahead of him. After finding the pilot eviscerated on a pike, I think I would come to the logical conclusion that Lynn is dead and move on with my life. Life just happens to be located somewhere in the opposite direction from here. Does Blake not carry a cell phone on him? You could probably assume there's no coverage out here in the desert, but I at least expect someone to try to make a call to establish that fact. Bird jump scares are the laziest jump scare in existence, right up there next to cat jump scares. Look, I can make a lot of things funny, but a pile of burnt children is definitely on my list of lines not to cross. Also, if these people kill their children out of fear of the Antichrist, how do they maintain the cult without new generations of cultists? And considering how many adults they also kill, I doubt they could sustain this cult for very long. And how does no one know about this cult? There has to be hundreds of them living here. Arizona isn't that desolate. Is it? Is it weird that this is the second horror game this year about a group of crazy murderous hillbillies and a man looking for his wife? I think it's weird. Marta won't follow Blake into this barn for whatever reason. This will be a reoccurring trend with her. These flashes of light and sound are coming from a microwave radio tower nearby, and it's responsible for the Heaven's Gate cultists going insane and serves as the connection to the first Outlast. The game never bothers telling you that because they likely have a DLC plan where they do for a nominal fee. How long has it been since the last jump scare? About three minutes? Let's put one here. Papa Na thinks Lin is pregnant with the Antichrist, so of course he made it easy for her to escape and doesn't even send his men out to recapture her even though one of his men saw her escaping with Blake just a moment ago. She has a child in her I perform these avenues myself. He's insane. They're all fucking throat. insane. Please, Blake, I just want to get out of here. Pregnant. It's heavily implied that Lynn's pregnancy is an hallucination that Papanoth, Lynn, and Blake are all collectively having. Your response is probably similar to mine. What? God doesn't love you. Not like I do. The collector's edition of this game should come with a rape kit. Val and the heretics show up just in time to abduct Lynn since they worship the Antichrist in opposition to Heaven's Gate. Papanoth declared Lynn to be pregnant with the Antichrist only a few minutes ago, so the heretics would have had to have been nearby and just happened to hear that, and lucked out and stumbled upon Lynn and Blake just as Papanoth's men did. Lynn! The heretics just walked off a second ago. They should still be in the clearing with Blake, or at the very least, he should be able to track them. The transitions between Blake's Catholic school and Arizona are definitely one of the highlights of the game that caught me by surprise every single time. Blake stumbles across the one man who is unaffected by the Crazy Ray, and he just so happens to be the father of the Jane Doe that made Blake and Lynn come investigate. Ethan raises his own death flag by having Blake hide in the root cellar, ensuring Blake will have a good view through the floorboards of him being violently killed. The guy who paints climbable ledges with white paint proves to be genre savvy, and mark the ledges with bloody handprints. Ah! With her jump scare finished, the crazy lady returns to her business of standing around doing nothing. 
Her task fulfilled. Nope, can't possibly call the elevator back down and continue chasing Blake. The only reason Marta fails to kill Blake each time is due to him mildly inconveniencing her. This game could give Five Nights at Freddy's a run for its money and the amount of jump scares. So did Blake just fall down a well and hallucinate the rest? Because if he did, he should be dead or dying at the bottom of that well. Have you ever wondered why certain toys were picked to be horror cliches? Like this music box. It has no importance, but it's creepy because it's a music box. I guess this is where the magic happens. Chairs for an audience to watch. I only saw her afterwards. Thanks, game. I really wanted to find myself in a rape den with a bucket of feces a third time in my life. I certainly can't climb over that wall that you just climbed over. I am possibly the most incompetent killer that has ever lived. The outside woman has this world's destruction in her womb. I probably shouldn't send crazy people for their lack of logic, but you've killed every child in this town for fear that they were the Antichrist. After you've done that a few too many times, you would think people might start to second guess you when you declare yet another unborn child to be the Antichrist. She will bear her filthy yield before dawn. She will? She wasn't even showing signs of pregnancy when you examined her. Where did Val take her? First, how do you know Val and the heretics took Lynn anywhere? Val killed your men before she abducted Lynn. Your last sighting of Lynn was her running away with Blake. Second, how would you not have any idea where Val and the heretics live? This isn't a big place. It's an old mining town and a mine, and your people live in the town. Kind of narrows down the possibilities. This game makes me want to take a shower. Once again, Marta stops her pursuit due to mild inconvenience. The chain to lift the gate is right behind her. Blade just used it to open the gate himself. This jump scare actually managed to get me, but I'll be damned if I'm gonna take a sin off for stimulating my flight or fight response. Blake survives a headfirst fall off a railroad bridge. Sure, they try to explain it with a tree branch catching him, but I find convenient tree branches to be cliche and would sin it all the same. This civilist plague camp section feels like someone turned your awkward sex ed class on STDs into a level. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna lean over my chair and... <laughs> This guy punching you in the face is exactly what a jump scare feels like. I'm so conflicted. On one hand, I want to make the obvious Master Blaster joke. On the other, I could probably work in Peter Dinklage somehow. Blake is going to need some penicillin after this, because he just contracted syphilis. I think that might be a first in games. He's the Skull Messiah. <laughs> I'm not sure how making Blake drink syphilis-infected blood proves he's the STD Messiah. I just realized I used the words STD Messiah. We'll rise again in more perfect flesh. We will uh, eat. Of that flesh and hold communion and be healed of our physical sins. This is why the Catholics came up with crackers and wine. Fun crucifixion fact, you have to drive the nails through the wrist if you want the person to stay on the cross. And these guys don't even nail his feet to it. This game makes escaping a crucifix seem incredibly simple. Jesus should have stepped up his game. We'll get you out of there. I want you to find a place to hide. Some place safe where you can remember the taste of her kiss when you felt her neck break, you deceased cocksucker. And that's why I don't take calls from Comcast anymore. I'm beginning to suspect Laird is cheating at transubstantiating Blake. He nailed him to a cross so he would die and come back, but made it easy for him to escape. Now he buries Blake alive under what had to be an inch of dirt so he can easily escape that too and prove that he's the messiah that will cure their sickness. One thing you come to learn in horror games is that anytime you see a shiny object the game wants you to pick up, you can count on something scary happening, thirdly making it less scary by how predictable its appearance is. Touch the skirt! Those who were under Laird's care may have hated him, but they definitely believed eating Blake would cure them of their syphilis. So it's kind of odd that right when they have Blake, they kill Laird, which lets Blake escape. If you removed all the gore and jump scares, you would have a game about the world's worst Bible camp. This view of the radio tower and a report from a scientist is the only clue you get on the corporation driving people mad. This rap section gets a sin removed for being creepy without the use of jump scares. Amazing what you can achieve with just atmosphere and implied threat. Does it rain blood often in Arizona? <laughs> well, that atmosphere was short-lived. Back to jump scares, I guess. AOL Instant Messenger was well known for being the creepiest of messenger apps. This game has used Jessica's hanging body for how many jump scares now? I'm going to take one final sin off for this chase to the mind building that switches back and forth between reality and Blake's hallucinations. Blake survives the several hundred foot elevator drop. Two skeletons poised mid coitus with an infant skeleton in the rib cage of the mother ranks as one of the most fucked up things I've ever encountered in a game. However, there's still a bit more of this game left, and I'm pretty confident it can top it. I really didn't want this sin to show up in this game out of all games, but Outlast 2's boob rendering technology is five years behind Metro Last Light. Val wants to rape Blake, but spends a good amount of effort trying to kill him in the mines before drugging him and thankfully doing the deed while he hallucinates himself back in Catholic school. I think I'm going to delete this game from my hard drive when I'm done so it can't be used to incriminate me. Like, why do you want to come over? I don't know. 
What don't you know, Jessica? There is no way you heard Jessica say that through a closed door at the other end of the hallway. Blake's guilty conscience is due to him not helping his friend Jessica, who is being sexually abused by Father Loudermilch, which led to her death after falling down a flight of stairs while running from him. That's pretty much it. No twists, no connection to present day, just some screwed up childhood drama on top of everything else the devs did in this game to push the envelope and prove how edgy they are. Considering how much time was spent on Blake's past, I was kind of expecting something revealing. Like, the sexual deviant leader of the heretics, Val, was Jessica all along considering how alike they look, and even parallel each other in the final hallucination with them both holding Blake to the ground. Blake comes to in the middle of a raid by the Heaven's Gate cultists who have killed all the heathens of the mine. For whatever reason, they didn't touch the catatonic guy standing in the middle of the cave until he woke up. The heretics took Blake's camera after they drugged him, yet he has it back after his hallucination ends. Marta is killed by an actual deus ex machina when the storm knocks a cross off a building and impales her. Oh God! Keep Well, that's something I've never done in a game before. Never asked to either. There's nothing there. If I'm reading Lynn's dying words correctly, her baby is just an hallucination. But for that to be true, Lynn, Blake, Papanoth, and everyone else had to be hallucinating Lynn's pregnancy. While everyone in this game, including Blake, has lost their mind due to the pulse, Lynn has been underground most of that time where microwaves wouldn't reach her. So she shouldn't be hallucinating something like this. And Lynn dies from blood loss due to childbirth. So I'm guessing her mind made it real? Oh yeah, we had one more loose end to tie up. Uh, let's just have him kill himself. Just like in the first Outlast, you're gonna have to wait for the DLC to get the entire picture.